<laughs> is that a mojito flavored white cloth? It is mojito natural lime. All right, so <laughs> this video is a long time coming. We've been talking with Motor City Aftermarket for a while about getting their M1. T2. <laughs> She's right. The Motor City M1 front bumper, as well as their T2 bumper, which is soon to be released. So we got our hands on basically both. their, yeah, both of them, but also M1, their- T2. What? <laughs> She's barely had a little bit of white claw, so she's not even <laughs> drunk right now. Anyways, we got the M1 bumper, we got the T2 bumper. Um, what I'm gonna show you here, I already did this a while, a little while back. I already installed the M1 on Neo here with a winch. Um, I hurried up and installed the winch because we were heading out off-roading to Redbird State Recreation Area, so I had to get it installed quickly, and I got the bumper done in time for that. And what we're gonna do today is we are going to- Have White Claw. Drink White Claws and- It's a White Claw install. We are gonna finally install a bumper on Mo here, which has been- Mo Long overdue. And Mo's been neglected lately, so Mo needs some love. Um, James neglects cars when he gets new cars. Or Jeeps when he gets new Jeeps. Oh, we had, we had a vision for Neo and we needed to get it completed, so. Yeah. Anyway, so. We're gonna get the bumper installed on Mo. Um, unfortunately for now, we're gonna have to lose the Dio Dynamics uh, grill light bars there because they're not gonna fit with this new bumper, I don't think. It would be nice if they do fit though because I love the Dio Dynamics light bar, but I also love Motor City's bumper. So I'm kind of hoping you figure that out. For now, I'm gonna take them off. We'll get the bumper installed. So what we're excited to show you though, one of the coolest parts about these Motor City bumpers is that they're, Versus I guess you would call it, yeah, modular. Um, they're basically, you've got the frame of the bumper and then you've got a skin or a cover. Mm -hmm. And what we're excited to show you is how quickly and easily you're able to switch between the T2 and the M1 bumper. Or if you were to damage one of your bumpers, all you, all you have to do is buy a new skin, new cover, and Slide replace it. it um, over the Place existing it. frame, which is holding your winch and stuff. So we're gonna show you how to do that, how quick and easy it is to swap that out. Mm -hmm. That way, if we wanna change up design, which one's on which vehicle, we can do that in just a few minutes. So we're gonna show you that after we get the frame installed on Mo. so. Let's go, man. Let's get going, let's put Kim to work. Yeah. Well guys, the first thing that's gonna come off is this plastic cover. I am taking out the clips under the bumper so that we can remove this plastic cover. I'm using these needle nose pliers to grab these clips from, and they're in here. They're not these screws here. They're clips up in here. There's this like rectangular cutout and they're way up in there. So they look like this and I'm just grabbing them here, ripping them out. All right, you're gonna take your eight millimeter socket Take out these screws, there's only two. There's one here, and then one all the way over here. So one on the left, one on the right. Oh. There it is. All right, next step, we're going to take off these two bolts to get rid of the skid plate. You gotta do extreme close-up, right? Extreme close-up, whoa! It's amazing we get any work done. Oh, it's gonna ruin the floor. You just keep an eye on it. Pay attention to your work, Kimberly. Is it, it's not a heavy stick, No. Oh. All right. So the next thing we need to do, and this is the only plug on the front bumper, is this plug right here. You just need to disconnect that, and that powers the fog lights. 
So once I get that unplugged, which I always forget how to unplug it, but once I figure that out, um, then all we gotta do is undo the bolts that hold the bumper on and this thing will be off. All right, so last step here, there's four bolts on each side that go straight in this way. The bolt, the bolt comes in like this and the nuts on the back side, there's four of them. And uh, we're just gonna disconnect all four of those and then the bumper will slide right off the front here. There's two bolts that go sideways into the frame, one on each side. So these bolts that I'm undoing right now, these also hold the diode dynamics light bar bracket. So you might be able to see it across this way. See this bolt? Can you see it on the camera, Kim? Yes. That one holds the diode dynamics light bar bracket. So as I undo this, this is gonna release the light bar bracket and then also make it so that the bumper is ready to come off. This side, the bolts did not want to come out. They were like jammed in there. So we had to take a little hammer to it. And uh, it's all off. These are the wires, the plugs for the diode dynamics um, light bar. So those I'll just have to tuck up in here for now. And uh, you can see this is the plug for the fog lights, which we won't be needing anymore. So we have this plug still dangling from the fog lights. We're gonna take this electrical tape, and we're going to seal it off, and we'll end up doing that for the diode dynamics plugs as well. All right, so next up we're gonna grab the bumper frame from Motor City Aftermarket. And what this is gonna do is, this is where you would actually mount your winch. Um, we don't have a winch for Mo yet, but the, mo the winch would bolt into these holes here. I can't do it with, I can't point to them. But see those four holes in the center there, Kim, if you wanna to point to those? That's where the winch would bolt in now, if you had it. We don't have one for this, so we're gonna mount this up without it. But basically this just sets in here, like so. And then we're gonna take the supplied bolts and they're just gonna bolt in here to the frame. Okay, so using these supplied bolts and washers, and then you're gonna have a some washer, a lock washer, and a nut for hey, the back side. Hey, show us, show us, show us. Washer, lock washer, and a nut for the back side. You're gonna take these and start them from the outside through like so. And then on the back side, I'll put the nut on. Okay, so we're gonna have eight of those, one, two, three, four, on both sides. Um, we'll get those all bolted in, and then uh, show you what's next. So Kim is tightening these down. How tight do we do it? Let's see, as tight as you can get them. It says, actually you wanna tighten them to spec, which is 66 foot pounds of torque, but we'll get a torque wrench later and do them with that, but just get them nice and tight for now. All right, so with the bumper frame mounted, Kim, why don't you go ahead and grab the T2 bumper here, and I'm gonna grab the bull bar and the bolts. They give you six of these nice black bolts that are gonna hold the, the T2 bumper to the frame, as well as the bull bar. So Kim, as you can see, is just sliding that over, and what it does is it slides right over the where the shackles go here. And you take your bull bar, and this just sets up on top here. So I'm gonna have you just hold that, Kim. So with the T2 bumper sitting in place and the bull bar sitting on top, um, what you'll notice is you've got three holes, bolt holes on the top, on each side. And you're gonna take these bolts and you're gonna line them up and start them up and that's gonna get it locked into the frame. Start the other two here. Yeah. There you go. It's this is the uh, 
Seven thirty seconds one, I think, is what works the best here for these guys. So basically, what happens is once you lock those down, and don't go too tight with it, Kim, because oh, we're gonna sure. have to take it off. Yeah, once you lock it down, that whole bull bar and bumper cover are secured to the frame. So she's just kind of lightly snugging them because we are gonna pop this one back off. Um, this takes literally like a couple minutes, which is nice. So clearly we're gonna still want to get a winch for Mo here. We have not picked one out yet. Although we are really liking the one we went on um, Neo, but it will look much better with that in there. Um, you can see that there is a slight difference in the design and shape of the T2. Yeah, I was just noticing there's a flat angle here. Mm -hmm. Whereas on the other one it's cut out. Yep. So. so what we're going to do now cool. is we're going to show you how quick and easy it is to remove and swap the two. Um, to keep it fair, let's uh, go ahead. We're going to pop the mega shackles off mega shackles. and uh, we'll take those off and we'll get this hook out of the way, the uh, winch hook out of the way. And then uh, we can go ahead and show you how quick and painless it is to uh, six bolts on each one and uh, be able to swap them out. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have Kim go ahead and we're gonna see how long it takes her to take one off, take the other one off and flip flop them back and forth. So here we go. We'll probably fast forward it for you so that you don't have to sit through watching all these screws undone, but go Kim, go Kim, go. So what you'll have to do, Kim, is once you pop that bull bar and that bumper off, probably set it down here on the rubber mat so you get the other one off and then you can flip flop them, okay? Now the difference people are going to notice on this one is we already have, on Neo, we already have the skid plate installed underneath, so that will be sitting underneath there, whereas on Mo we didn't install that part yet, so. Sorry guys, I take my time. Kim is very cautious. <laughs> so you can see what it looks like on this one while she goes to set that down with the winch sitting in here already. And you can see the skid plate underneath, well kind of because it's dark here, but here's a better view of the skid plate. And Kim is getting started on the other one. Kim's kicking over tools, tripping, tripping. but she's got the bull bar off now, which means all she has to do is slide that T2 bumper cover off, and then you can go straight on to Neo with it. <laughs> Don't pull on the frame, that's not going to help you much. So now she's popping the M1 onto Mo. Lining up the holes and then just grab the other bull bar and the bolts.
And that's it. Just uh, all she'd have to do is snug those in, yeah, bolt them in. Yeah, those screws. Right. That's all and, we gotta do. and then we would add shackles. We still need to order a set of the Gear America Mega Shackles for Mo. Red. Red, Red for sure. The same ones that we got on Neo. And then um, order a set of those. We gotta figure out which winch we're gonna go with if we're gonna do the same one or try a different one. And uh, but yeah, those will look really cool on there Amazing. with our grill and our red accents. So. Amazing. So she's not gonna snug them down this time because we are gonna keep the M1 bumper and bull bar over on Neo and we're gonna keep the T2 on Mo for now just because that's the way we like it. That's the setup we have, so we'll do that switcheroo after you like this video, subscribe to our channel, and comment below on which bumper you like best. Okay, so we almost forgot to show you installing the skid plate on Mo because we already had it installed on Neo. Um, so I'm gonna work on that. Kim's putting the shackles back on Neo. Motor City gives you a couple of brackets that are gonna bolt up into the frame. And then we've got the actual skid plate that bolts up with just a couple of bolts, so this shouldn't be any big deal. Okay, so this is the bracket for the skid plate. Um, what you'll notice is there is already a nut cert here into the frame. Um, this is on Mojito on the Wrangler. This has this nut cert. The issue I ran into on Neo was that because the Gladiator came with a metal skid plate from the factory, even though it was the plastic bumper, it didn't have this nut cert. So I had to get one and I had to insert a nut cert in there in order to be able to bolt this in. But the JL Wranglers have it there if you've got the plastic bumper. So this just threads in here. You're gonna snug this down nice and tight. And then you're gonna do the same. This is the driver side. I'm just gonna have the same thing on the passenger side here. So I just gotta tighten those down and then the skid plate's gonna bolt up from the bottom into these, into the brackets here, thread up in there. So the last thing that has to happen to install your skid plate underneath your Motor City aftermarket bumper is just to run these two bolts in, one there and one here. Run those two bolts into that bracket that we added and tighten it down. And that is how you complete your Motor City aftermarket bumper and skid plate install on their T2 or the M1 front bumpers.